Hi, I'm Camille Mum, a graduate student at the University of Michigan, and today I'll be talking about my work exploring the impact of mobile elements on Alzheimer's disease using targeted long-read sequencing. Alzheimer's disease is a devastating neurodegenerative disease and the most common form of dementia. Though several loci have been linked to an increased risk of Alzheimer's disease, the underlying genetic mechanisms are not yet fully understood. One potential disease mechanism is the accumulation of somatic mutations in neurons. These are mutations that can arise in a single cell and can be passed on to its descendants. This can lead to an accumulation of mutations in tissues such as the brain. We are interested in characterizing somatic mutations from retrotransposon activity. Mobile element insertions are not only an important source of variation, but these insertions can also cause disease. These elements are highly repetitive, which can make them challenging to be characterized with short read sequencing. So here, we are interested in investigating the role of somatic mutations from retrotransposon activity as one potential disease mechanism. And to do this, we're doing targeted long read sequencing in postmortem brains from individuals with AD. Recently, our lab adapted the Nanopore Cas9 targeted sequencing, or NCATS protocol, to target mobile element insertions in control cell lines. Targeted sequencing with nanopore long reads allows us to ligate adapters specifically at MEIs and efficiently capture, map, and characterize elements that could be missed with short read sequencing. We can then call MEI events with nanopal. Using this technique, we can obtain an on-target rate of more than 60% and capture full-length line and allo elements. Today, I'll be showing some preliminary data from this project where we've used NCATs to sequence MEIs across multiple brain regions from postmortem tissue from individuals with a high likelihood of Alzheimer's disease, as well as from control individuals. We are targeting elements that are active in the human genome and are using guide RNAs targeting L1HS, ALUYA5, and ALUYB8. The table below summarizes some of this data with the number of regions and samples, as well as some sequencing data from our capture experiments. So far, we've sequenced around 40 regions from nine brain samples. With this data, we will be able to characterize non-reference events both between regions from the same individual as well as between patients and patient groups. Next, I will show some examples of what some of this preliminary data looks like, starting with an example of a non-reference L1HS insertion in the intron of AUTS2 gene on chromosome 7. This is an image from IGV where the dark gray tracks show the coverage and the light gray tracks show the reads of this locus. You can see that we have good coverage from around 10 to around 30x at this element across three brain regions. In the dark gray, you can see that we have bidirectional sequencing from the cut site in L1HS. And the multicolored part of the read is the clip sequence which contains L1HS sequence. As you can see, this is a non-reference event is shared across all regions from this individual. Next, I'm showing a non-reference ALUYA5 event in the intron of the EED gene. Again, this event is also shared between all regions of the brain from this individual. The coverage tracks are again shown in dark gray, but in this image, the reads are now shaded by CPG methylation, which we can get directly from base calling our reads with guppy. The red positions in the reads correspond to methylated CPGs, and the blue shows unmethylated CPGs. Overall, this region is mostly methylated, and it's consistent between brain regions. Overall, these examples show our ability to capture MEIs and start to explore the methylation of these elements. The future directions of this project include ongoing sequencing, as well as further characterization of non-reference events between brain regions and between patient groups. We will also explore methylation patterns and other types of repetitive element variation in these samples. And with that, I'd like to thank all the members of my lab, as well as those from the Mills and Todd labs. And in particular, I'd like to thank Jessica Switzenberg and Torin McDonald, as well as Arthur Joe. Finally, I'd like to thank my funding sources and Nanopore for the opportunity to present my work. Thank you.